When we look at a map of the Nordic Bronze Age, we see that the country at Denmark is an area where haplogroup I1 flourished. Many people alive today who are positive for haplogroup I1 would have had direct common paginal ancestors from the past who lived in that region. Many Danish men alive today carry a record of these common patrilineal connections from the past in their Y chromosome DNA. Unfortunately though, Y chromosome DNA testing is not that popular amongst the Danish. As of January 14th, 2024, in the Family Tree DNA database, there are only 824 men that claim Denmark for their earliest known patrilineal country of origin, with 303 of them being positive for haplogroup I1, making haplogroup I1 around 37% of the total. Because of this lack of testing, it means that the haplotree is going to have a lot of subclades that are missing these Denmark connections. An example of this would be subclade IBY19383 on the family tree DNA public haplotree and the phylo equivalent SMP IFGC75802 on the Y full haplotree. This branch dates to around the Roman Iron Age and has 98 testers thus far in the family tree DNA database. With zero of those 98 modern testers claiming Denmark, let alone any country in Scandinavia for their earliest known patrilineal country of origin, it would be quite difficult to assert a Scandinavian origin for this subclade based on modern testers alone. However, when we look at the ancient DNA evidence for the subclade, it most certainly, most probably has a Scandinavian origin, most likely somewhere in Denmark. We have ancient DNA sample VK446, who was discovered on the island of Funen in Denmark. His sample was mentioned in the 2020 study, Population Genomics of the Viking World. Besides certain countries having minimal modern testers in the database, what are some other reasons why certain subclades are missing patrilineal connections from certain countries on the haplotree. I can think of two reasons why. First, there could be a situation where there was such large scale mass migration that any record of these patrilineal connections from said country in the past no longer remain there today. Everybody who was positive for that subclade back then migrated to a different country. The other possibility is population displacement. Over hundreds of years and thousands of years, incoming new patrilineal lines can displace older patrilineal lines that once lived in that region. For example, the Venerable Bede wrote in 731 CE in his work, Ecclesiastical History of the English People, quote, from the Angles, that is the country which is called Angulus, and which is said from that time, to have remained desert to this day, end quote. So you could have a hypothetical scenario where people living in England today who can trace their patrilineal lines to the angles are not going to find any modern matches in the database from the Jutland Peninsula because there was mass migration of these people to England. In 2023, there was a very important study that was released titled Genetic History of East Central Europe in the First Millennium CE. In that study, ancient DNA samples from the Iron Age in Poland were compared to the Middle Ages in Poland. To quote the study, quote, I1 slash I1A frequency decreased from 41.3% in the Iron Age to 3.5% in the Middle Ages, end quote. So one could theoretically have a patrilineal line that they can trace to the Goths and earlier to the Wilbark culture in Iron Age Poland. But because of the population displacement of patrilineal lines in Poland between the Iron Age and Middle Ages, they might not ever find that subclade match on the modern haplotree in Poland. Lastly, I want to add that there are a myriad of reasons why 
a patchy little line can move from one area of Europe to another over hundreds and thousands of years, besides the known ancient Germanic tribal migrations and the Viking Age. For example, I can trace my patchy little line to the mid-1600s in Belgium. So on the haplotree, tree, I have Belgium listed for my earliest known patchy little country of origin. But family legends assert that our direct patchy little ancestors emigrated from England to Belgium in the century or two prior to that for either religious reasons or economic reasons. So one might incorrectly infer that my I-1 patrilineal line can be attributed to Frankish movements into the region, when in reality, it's most likely a result of migration period or Viking Age movements into England prior to that. Thanks for watching.